Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Farmhouse Star Sew Along. This is the quilt that we're making, and today is Friday, June 10th, 2022, and this is episode two, where I'm going to show you how to make the same scrappy star in a different size, though, than we made last time in episode one, but this one we're going to put onto a circle and then onto a background. Okay, so Basically, you already know how to sew the shapes. They're all the same points and the centers just like before. This one that I'm sewing right here is this one. So I've got this background cut and iron into fourths. And then let me just set this up here. And then I've got my background and my sewing interfacing. Okay, this is the this is the sewing interfacing cut. Tells you in the pattern what size to cut. And then we're using the 12 inch ruler for that. So just like the Sew so Simple Shapes, I you know, simply just place this on the interfacing and trace around it. This is the 12 inch size for the 12 inch star, which is what we'll be making. And this one is so large that I just, you know, I pin it. And I just sew it, these big circles, the same way that I do the Sew so Simple Shapes start sewing till I get to the line. Today I'm sewing on Sweet Baby James, <laughs> who is uh, named after James Taylor. Let me move this so that this circle will move smoothly. And once again, I just sew around directly on the line. going as slow as fast as I want and using a foot that I can see directly where the needle goes into my fabric and interfacing so that I know I'm sewing directly on the line and not guessing and especially on the circle because I don't want a dented circle so I want to be able to sew exactly what I trace. All right so I'm coming around meet up right here where I started and I'm just going to continue over sewing about an inch and then sewing right off the edge. I'm going to line up this scrap. I don't want to waste time or thread. I just, I don't know, I've always just sewn with that for filming. Okay, so there I have that. Go ahead and take my pins out. Stick them in my handy dandy truck pin cushion here. I do have a tutorial on how to make this pin cushion if you want to go and click, click on the videos page on this channel and you can find them. And then for the circle, I just go ahead and trim around it. Now again, when I'm sewing, I always have right sides up on both of these with my Sew Simple Shapes. Anytime I'm sewing, I have the right side up of the fabric and I have when I say the right side up of the interfacing, there is no wrong or right side of the interfacing, but once I've traced on it, that becomes the right side or the top side. So the side that I traced on. Okay, so I just trim around that. And then I'm going to open it up just like I normally do. Starting... There we go. Like I said before, I don't normally use these big scissors to cut this open, but this is such a big circle, I think it's going to be fine. And I don't, you know, need a great big X or anything. All I'm doing is cutting enough to turn. So I'm simply turning this, smoothing it out as much as I can. And then over here, I'll take this, and again, I'm just pushing on the fabric, and what I'm doing is I'm just pushing out that 100% cotton fabric so that I can see that seam, 
And it also, when you're pushing out like that, you can make sure that you're going past the interfacing so that, um, you know, your interfacing doesn't show in the front. If you're having problems with your interfacing showing in the front, you've either shifted it while you're ironing instead of pressing. If you iron back and forth, you can shift it on accident or you haven't pushed out, you know, and shaped, shaped it. Okay, I think I've went all around that about a million times. But um, I'm just gonna go like that and make sure that as I'm doing this, see how I can see the edge of that fabric coming around. So I know that's gonna be really nice and I can see my stitches. You know, if I feel like at this point I can push out if you need to. This roller really helps for that. Now this is just, um, this is flat. There are some older ones or some, I don't know if there's curved ones out on the market or not, but I know this is just um, styled after a wallpaper, a vintage wallpaper seam roller. But I like the flat ones. A lot of those are curved, but if you use the curved one, it can um, distort your shapes. And that's what I've found. And that's why I always like to use the flat. Okay, so then turn that over to move those out of the way so I can and then again I'm just gonna go and press press the edges of this circle like this and then because I've applied heat by using the wood of these clappers and putting it on there it's gonna make it nice and flat okay so I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute I've got these ready to go, like I say, this is another one that I've already sewn that's in this size. So this is done with the 12 inch ruler. And let's see, this one is right here in the quilt. And the one I've showed you is right there. And this is, let's see, is this a, uh, oh yeah, that's, that's the same one that I'm showing you to sew, but it's with a different yellow fabric. So again, within this collection, they, it all coordinates together. You can put what other, whatever fabric you want in, in its place, just as long as you're using the correct size. Now, while that's cooling, I wanna be able to show you the sizes that we're using that I did use for these points, which this is a 12 inch star. So that makes it easy that you know that you're going to use the G12C, which means center, and then the point. So in episode one, we use 16, and this one, we're using 12. So these are the points, and that's what that looks like. Okay, so that's what I used for this. I have several sets in my little envelope. I just put two or three in there, I don't know why. But anyway, that's what I used for those. All right, let's see how this is doing over here. See, isn't that amazing? Those clappers really make a difference. And that's just exactly how I want it. That's what it looks like on the back. That's what it looks like on the front. And then I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna show you how I lay this out on a circle. It's a little bit, it's sort of the same and a little bit different than what I showed you last episode because of the circle. And so let's go over to the work table and get started. Okay, so here we are. I've got my design board because we always need a design board to be able to pin base to. I've got my circle and here's my star pieces. And I use my photo here to lay them out. Here's the photo right here so that I knew which order they went in if you want to follow the photo like I am. And the difference between this star when you lay it out is, is from the 16 inch star that we did in episode one, is there is space around that star. You still wanna center it in the block, but there's space around it. This one makes it easy because you're doing it on a circle, meaning this is a 12 inch star, this is a 12 inch circle, so that we know the points 
are going to just go all the way to the edge of the circle like this one, see, that I already have done. So I always do it on the circle first. I do the applique and um, after I lay the circle on here. So I'll, I'll explain that at the end. First, what I do is I press this circle in half or just crease it just in half. I don't need lines going this way, just this way and this way as a starting guide. And all I have to do is put that point right where I pressed it and stick two pins in it. And then I'm gonna kind of overlap that. So it's pretty simple to lay, to lay this one out because this center is your guide. Now, now you know how much to tuck under this because you want, you want these to be straight across here, but you want your point to just be right on the edge of that circle. So then that's the second one that I lay out. And now I know, see how much this is overlapped and this is overlapped. I know that I can move this up a little bit. I just kind of, because we're making these by hand, sometimes the circle might be just a tiny bit smaller. Sometimes these might be bigger, smaller, but um, that's what's great about these So Simple Shapes is the star points, you can tuck under these scrappy pieces. And so I like that a little bit better. Looks like for this, it's gonna be tucked under about a quarter of an inch. So then I stick two pins in that. And again, I'm just overlapping on the top just so that I can see that it's straight right here. Putting two pins in so they do not shift. One would work, but two is even better. And I just push that in until the tip is right there. Two. And then same for this. And the reason I'm using this as a guide, this straight line, because, you know, I could go like this or I could go like this. But if I have this, these two straight lines as a guide, then that really helps me to place that. And if your stars get a little bit wonky, it's okay. I mean, that's kind of the look of this star, right? Now that I have those pinned down, then I can lift these up to the top. Make sure it's gonna cover nicely. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and glue this down to the circle, all right? And then once that circle is dried, once those are, the glue is dry, then I'll go ahead, and then I can lay this circle on top of this background. And because I've pressed this and quarters, I can center that circle on there. Okay, just like this one. So let me pull that out and I'll show you the measurements of that. Now again, in the pattern, it tells you all the cutting and this is cut larger so that you can trim it down after. But for the placement right now, what I do is I have, it looks like it's two and a quarter. This circle is two and a quarter from all of the edges. Okay, yeah. So that's in the center. And then once this is appliqued, and I'm just gonna machine applique that the same way, then for this block, you will take the 14 and a half inch trim it ruler, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna lay it on these folded edges of the background. Let me see if I can find them. Don't have a quiet on the folds for some reason. Okay, there we go. I couldn't see it in that light. Okay, there we go. And that gives your circle an inch. So you can see that you're, once, once this is trimmed up with the 14 and a half, and once this is sewn into the quilt in the seam allowances, you're gonna have about an inch left over of this circle to show this background, okay? And that's how you do the 12 inch scrappy star blocks, okay? 
So you use the 14 and a half inch trim at ruler for that. And for the 12 inch, again, you're using, you just match up the 12 inch circle ruler. It's a 12 inch circle. And then the two shapes that you use are the G12 and the G12 points, the C and the P. Okay, so those match up. And then there's several, you know, the pattern tells you how many of that size, you know, that you need to make for the quilt. And then there's also, these are the done the exact same way, these 10 inch ones right here. Okay, let's see. I think that's right side up like it is in the quilt. So we've got these. So this is 10 inch, okay? And so when you make those, you make them the exact same way, except for you're using the 10 inch circle ruler to make your circles right here for the background. And then you are using the G10C for the center and the G10P for the points for that. Okay, I've got another one here ready to go. So I've got all my pieces cut and trace for my center and my point. I've got my background for the circle and I've got that for the background. And then when I go to trim the 10 inch stars, when I go to trim those up, what I use for that is the 12 and a half inch trim it ruler. Okay, so those blocks will finish. Is it better? Which way is it better when it doesn't show that That's good. light in the ceiling? Um, so you're just gonna do that the exact same way. Okay, trim that up for the 12 inch. And then you're gonna be making 10 inch. I mean, excuse me, eight inch. I just showed you the 10 inch. <laughs> eight inch stars as well and scrappy points like that. And so for that, you'll be using the eight inch ruler. All three of these rulers come in the same set, the 12 inch, the 10 inch, and the eight inch. I have two different sets of circle rulers. This is the set that has the 12, 10, and eight. And then you just use the interfacing for that. And again, I've got another one ready to go here with the background, the circle. And for that, I'm using the G8C and the G8P. So again, eight and eight, they all, all match up for that eight inch star. And again, the pattern tells you how many of those that you need to make. And I hope you're having fun getting ready for the sew along. I hope you have fun making the stars. You know, last week was kind of like I showed you the first block and just, you know, showed you how to get ready and, you know, talk to you about cutting and that you could be doing that. But I know that different quilt shops are doing, um, doing it together or you can just do it individually with those online. How you would share online with those who are doing it is just use the hashtag farmhouse star uh so long and have fun making these scrappy blocks and appliquing them how you want now um in a couple of weeks i'll be back on the 27th and i'll be showing you how to make here let's just show you in this quilt i'll be showing you and this is kind of a different way because you're using these shapes let me pull this quilt in so see, here's another 12 inch star that we just made. But see, we've got all of these stars that are all one fabric. And as you know, the templates, the So Simple Shapes are come in centers and points. And so I'm going to be showing you next week how to use, how to trace them on your interfacing and to make them all one star. We don't have to do these separately. We just use two fabrics. And so I will be back in a couple of weeks and show you that. And that will be episode three. And then all the tutorials for each of the three different kinds of blocks will be finished. That doesn't mean you have to have your quilt finished. Again, like I always say, this is not a race. You can do it at the uh, speed that your quilt shop is doing it, or you can do it on your own speed, or you can do it all in the month of June, or you can, you know, do all of the circle stars that I just showed you right now in the next two weeks so that all you have left are these. It's just whatever you want to do. I just wanted to be able to show you the individual ways to make the blocks. 
So I will um, be back in a couple of weeks again. Thanks for joining me and I'll chat with you later.